Hello Lagos, hello Nigeria, you're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. You're welcome to yet another packed episode of the program and um, today we're going to be talking about basketball and we're also going to be talking about an exciting new product developed by a young Nigerian um, that has to do with football gaming football video gaming uh, his his product is designed to ensure that the nigerian premier football league and its clubs uh, uh, become household names with football fans in nigeria and across africa you know but the key subject for today is basketball we're going to be talking about you know the game of basketball and its potential uh, for business um, in, 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 in Nigeria. Basketball is arguably the second most popular sport in Nigeria after football. It has the dynamics to go head to head with football in a fight for the educated, urban dwelling and middle class sports fans. But you see, basketball is, is um, still yet to, to, to achieve its potential, even though it's fun and funky. It's played across Nigeria and it's especially popular with young middle-class Nigerians in secondary schools and university, universities. But you see, perennial leadership squabbles have stagnated the development of the domestic game, with the big, biggest casualty being the top flight league. In the absence of a dependable league, you know, uh, there has been very little economic and social cultural impact that basketball has made in Nigeria. This has led to the MBBF depending almost entirely on government funding as well as foreign born and bred talents. While this has seen us win African championships in the male and female categories, it has stunted local talent development. How do we turn things around? How do we revitalize the local game? How do we harness the humongous business potential of basketball in Nigeria? Now, joining me to discuss the status of our basketball is Mr. Babs Ogunwade. He is the vice president of the Ni Nigerian Basketball Federation, the MBBF. Babs, as he's fondly called, has been a part of basketball, and basketball has been a part of him since his teenage years in the 1970s. A former Nigeria international, he is a University of Lagos and African Basketball Hall of Famer. He captained the Nigerian basketball team to the World University Games in 1981. He's been the head of Lagos State Basketball Association for 21 years and is currently the head of the Ogun State Basketball Association. Now, if anybody is competent to talk about basketball and its economic and social cultural impact in Nigeria and even across the world, Mr. Babs Ogunade is your man. Good afternoon. Welcome to the program, you know, Babs. Good afternoon. How is it? How is it going? Very well, thank you. Very well. You don't, you don't sound enthused. I'm very, very enthused. You I'm, are. Very, I'm very happy to be here. Okay. Glad to be a part of this. It's my pleasure to be here. Good. So basketball. Everybody's talking business, sports business today. Even the government is talking sports business. The minister is out there promoting, you know, um, the football league, you know, and he's gotten people like, you know, billionaires like Tony Lumelu looking in the league and saying, you know, maybe they should own a club or two. But then basketball, what's going on? You know, you guys should give football a fight. You know, you're popular like that. What's going on with basketball in Nigeria? Um, thank you. We, as you, I mean, as you rightly said, uh, basketball is arguably the only sport to challenge football in terms of popularity. Mm. But that said, we... Um, We've made some strides in in in, in last a couple of years, and um, while not uh, sounding boastful, we the female teams uh, the female team 
have um, won the Afro Basket, which is like the Afcon. Okay. We won in 2019, sorry, 2017 in Mali. Won again in 2019 in Senegal. Won in 2021 in Cameroon. And also won in 2023 in Rwanda. So um, we have done a bit in that area. The male, the, the, the Tigers and the Tigers, as they're called, the national teams, have uh, been the only uh, teams that qualified in Africa since basketball started being played in Africa to qualify for the Olympics simultaneously. There's okay. two teams from the same country playing in the Olympics. That was in, in Tokyo. Mm. Now, the female team has also qualified for the Olympics again as back-to-back -back qualification uh, for France. The men, unfortunately, didn't qualify. Now, I can adduce that to a couple of things. Now, because usually when those windows... Now, the, the, the path to qualification for the women is different from the men. And this keeps changing. Now, usually we try to, of course, get the best that we can get at that point to represent the country. So, uh, some came, and now we're not even sure of going to play until the government came to our rescue. So the people who had planned to come and play had gone back to their clubs. Mm. Because, you know, because the government didn't wake up enough time to fund the, the project. But, um, but beyond, beyond that, beyond that um, we're looking inwards to... And, and let me quickly correct the impression that uh, there is perennial uh, squabbles. That's been laid to rest. Okay. And um, if you are conversant with the programs, we had a full league last year, last season, and that was what has qualified um, the Hoopers to represent Nigeria mm. at the BL. So the league is going to start in a couple of weeks. That's the, uh, the, fem uh, the male league. And the female league is, is, is also going to um, also uh, going to come on stream. That's uh, the ones uh, that is sponsored by a bank like for uh, upwards of uh, eighteen years. So we have a full calendar. Yes, uh, we are trying to develop a lot of a lot of things behind the scenes. But uh, the the pro uh, the program has gone out now, and uh, the teams that are qualified for the league for the Premier League know themselves. So, now I have the information to go so and start like preparations. You have, how many teams are playing in the Premier League this year? Now, uh, 16. 16 teams? Yes. For 2024? That's 25. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. That is eight from each conference. Conference. Yeah. The conferences being the Northern Com uh, the Savannah Conference. And the Atlantic Conference. Okay. Yes. The Savannah being the Northern Conference. That is correct. And you know, we need to tell... Okay. Yes. A, lot of our, a lot of our viewers might not... Um, understand okay the and, and that's because there's not been much activity in, f in basketball for a while that is not true that is not true no, no what i mean is i'm talking about the ordinary man on the street i understand yeah. the ordinary man on the street but i'm just trying to correct the impression that there, there hasn't been activities in a while that is not very true but over the years we have divided, we have divided both conferences into savannah which is and, the north yes and atlantic and atlantic which is the south Okay, so when we talk about the business of sports, mm. you know, usually we, 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 we talk about, in the countries where sports is big business, it is domestic competitions that drive the business. Like if we take the United States, for instance, yeah, the NBA drives the business. They have the national basketball team, but I, I mean, I don't think America looks to the basketball, the national basketball team in terms of, you know, business or its business potential. So the question is, in Nigeria, what do we need to do to... I know you've started the league now, which is great. What more do you need to do to make sure that you, the league becomes a part of our, of our daily, daily our culture. interactions, our daily culture? Because that's what you would need to then drag in 
you know, the sort of sponsorship that you need or the, you know, the partnerships that you need to make basketball, you know, big business? Yes. So first and foremost, let me make the correction or make, make the distinction. The USA basketball mm. is totally different from the NBA. Okay. The NBA is a business. Yeah. And it's driven like that. So, don't let's, um, so, so we cannot compare that. However, however, to the business of uh, basketball, business of sports in Nigeria, mm. is it, we're a long way from Timbuktu <laughs> when it comes to that. And the reasons are not far-fetched. First, we do not have a sports policy at all. Now, people are quick to compare football with other sports. Mm. Now, football, and good, and good for them, they have seed money with which to run their programs. They have money, they have seed money. And you know what I, I mean, you know what I mean? Seed money from? From FIFA. Okay. FIFA, basketball doesn't have any money from FIFA. I mean, I, I just regaled what our girls have done from 2017 to date. Not a farthing. And this, I say, I'm saying this on camera. Not one penny. Not one dollar has been given to any team that has FIBA. won the championship. By FIBA, that is. By FIBA, yes. FIBA Africa, FIBA International. It's, 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 I mean, the Afro Basket is, I mean, is, a, is, a, is an African program. It's an African, uh, like AFCON. Mm, mm. So I can imagine how much AFCON, uh, they, I mean, our players got for AFCON. Now, I'm not going to even con uh, compare the fact that they got, the, player, uh, the football team got 12 billion before they went to play AFCON and they came second. Our basketball girls have come first in Africa in the last eight years. 2017, 2019, 2021, 2023. Not a farthing. From? From FIBA. Okay. What they get is a trophy and medals. These are ornaments that are not bankable. But again, let me also address the issue on ground. Now, because um, football has seed money, now all of the other sports go to the same market to raise funds. That's the government? Governments, the, the corporate corporates, the, everybody goes same, same same place. So now, it now becomes a shopper's market because the corporate now determines the value that you bring to their products. Mm. So no matter how good it is, they get to determine how much, I mean, what to give you. Can be peanuts. Well, if they say that's what they're going, they're, they're going to give you. That's what they're going to give you. Now, bearing in mind again, so let me back up to basketball. Bearing in mind that <clears throat> the number of teams, the number of players that make up a team. So how much do you want to give them? So what is the solution to this? How do we make basketball an economically viable sport? Okay, so you've just given the, the case of the United States. You've done the delineation between um, U.S. basketball and the NBA. Do we pursue a similar model in Nigeria? What do we need to do? I'll tell you. First, again, let me also say this to you. Most of the teams are owned by states, mm. by the states. In Nigeria? Yes. Mm. In America, every team is owned by an individual. It's the franchise. So you have to cut down the middle. Is that, is that a workable model? In no, hold on, hang on, hang on. Now, the, the, uh, the commissioner or the governor comes in and he loves basketball. <clears throat> oh, then probably will put up, uh, pull out all stops to fund basketball. Next time, the, the, governor that comes, the governor that comes there loves football. Basketball is dead. That's how it is. But if I were to invest in basketball and there was a robust program that is all of the networks, all of the programs, I mean, all of the uh, T's are dotted and 
the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Mm. That is, now, this is a model for business. Then we can begin to talk about that. Then everybody gets to benefit from the TV rights. Mm. Everybody gets to benefit from gate fees when you're playing. Mm. Everybody has, then everybody gets to have a cult following from where maybe they're, from, they're coming from Shagamu or from Kirikiri or from Yaba. Then they get, the, so, so the, 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 the areas own these clubs. So they have a cult following. So, but you see, they must have some sort of funding. Athletes are very, very funny. I was one, so I understand it. You can give them the best of clothes, the allowances. Don't touch it. <laughs> so, you see, all of these things are things that you need to put in place. And now everything is gotten. Now everybody's on, I mean, on social media. It must be a doctor. If you don't have a doctor, there's a problem. It must be a coach. It must be a certified coach. If you don't have a certified coach. Problem. It must be on the website, and so that they can have like a dashboard where all the names are, the height, the, all those things are. If you don't have those things, you're not going. It's not going to work. And all of those cost money. They cost money. Okay, so we're going to come back. Let's go on a short break, and and when we come back, we'll continue. Uh, the discussion. It's been exciting having you around. It's been quite informative. Um, you're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orofo Ezaga. I'm in the studio with me is Mr. Babs Ogunade. He's the Vice President of the Nigeria Basketball Federation. We're going to go on a short break and when we return, we're going to continue talking about how to make basketball big business in Nigeria. Don't go away. <laughs> 